Hello everybody. So today's lecture is going to focus on the idea of coordinate systems and where a coordinate system comes from and how a coordinate system then applies to maps and then helps us figure out how to use a compass. So our learning objectives, uh, we're going to focus on uh, understanding the basics of a geographic coordinate system and what that means. We're going to try and understand the differences um, between latitude and longitude and some of the other measurements we use like uh, UTMs and state plane coordinates, things that are going to be very important when we um, start working on uh, topographic maps and understanding maps. And then we're also going to try and understand the differences between uh, azimuths and bearings as it relates to using a compass. So in terms of understanding maps uh, and location, we want we basically want to know um, where things are and we want to know where we are. So we want to know um, where the things are that we want to get to and we want to get to them and then we want to be able to show um, what they are. So in this map here, here are here is a campus and the different uh, tree stands managed by the uh, forestry department on this campus. And so the big important part with this map is to be able to show where in relation to the campus the uh, forested areas are and then um, that way we can start figuring out okay well what's there and um, what are we going to use it for. Uh, things that we might use uh, maps for in forestry, trying to figure out where the nearest sawmill is or pulp mill or uh, bioproducts mill, wherever we're trying to um, get our forest products made at, how to get to the next stand or to get from um, plot to plot within a stand, uh, where where we should put a road, if it's management, um, possibly property boundary issues or just something like this, trying to figure out where the um, stand boundaries and the different um, stands are on a tract of land, some transportation issues possibly like uh, for this, how what roads am I going to use? to get back there and do I need to uh, make roads to get back there or do roads exist already um, but basically when we're talking about management in terms of maps and location we're talking about understanding uh, what do I have and where is it this map right here shows me this is what I have and now I also know where it is in relation to other things and that's really going to help me start um, uh, or give me kind of a foundation for making management decisions now, um, at this point, um, I want to remind you, you should be following along with the PDF slides open. So you could um, just sit, simply hit pause right here on uh, this video and then uh, be able to click this uh, hyperlink that I have down here for you. So just hit pause right now, read through that, and then uh, when you're ready, hit play again, and we'll continue on from there. So how do we get positional information? So how do we go from, okay, I see the end product that I want. I see that map, but how do I, how does this all start? Where, where did it come from? And so it starts with something called the geographic coordinate system. And that's basically just a location reference system for all the spatial features on Earth's surface. And so this is essential for projecting the, the spherical earth onto a map surface. Now what's going to be important is we've got to be able to put numbers to it so that we can we can be able to differentiate between a lot of different um, parts. But how do we do that and what numbers do we put to it? So where we're going to start is we're going to start with the Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, this comes from geometry and it's uh, the basis for the geographic coordinate system. It starts with an origin and um, that's where you're going to have two perpendicular lines meet uh, most easily this is an x axis and a y axis so we're familiar with this from uh, geometry class these two lines extend in opposite directions in to infinity and then along these lines the distance values increase in magnitude on a continuous scale away from the origin now that might sound fancy but this is all we're talking about your normal x y graph x is your horizontal axis and it's going to increase in value this one it's going to increase but it's going to increase in negative value and it'll increase on your vertical axis 
and it'll uh, increase in negative value or decrease um, off until infinity. That's the basic Cartesian coordinate system. But when we're thinking about the Earth, we don't need it to extend to infinity because the Earth has a definitive size. So, well, how are we going to take this basic idea and then use it for the Earth? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the Earth and we're going to divide it into 360 units. And we're going to call those degrees. Now, why 360 units? Well, because the Earth is a sphere and uh, that sphere, the closest flat shape, because we're going to try and transfer a rounded spherical 3D Earth to a two-dimensional flat map, the easiest shape to think of is a circle. And uh, in math, what, what the way we divide up a circle is into 360 degrees. So we're going to divide the Earth up into 360 degrees and um, vertically into 180 units, half as many um, units. The origin, uh, we're going to use the equator, which is going to be uh, the, the quote-unquote uh, middle of the sphere. And uh, the equator is going to be where uh, it is uh, widest, where the Earth is widest. And then we're going to do the equator and the prime meridian as the origin. We're going to talk about the prime meridian um, in a few slides. So um, the equator specifically is the line forming the maximum diameter of the spherical object perpendicular to the rotating axis. Um, so let's take those values. So we talked about horizontally, we're going to go 360. Vertically, we're going to go 180. So horizontally, um, if we're going to go 360, that means we need, because it's uh, positive x and negative x, so we want to go 180 positive and 180 degrees positive, and that's going to be to the east. And then we want to go 180 degrees negative, and that's going to be to the west. That's going to be called longitude. For north and south, we're going to go uh, 90 degrees positive, that's going to be north, and we're going to go negative 90 degrees, and that's going to be south. So when we think about north, south, north, east, south, and west, north we're going, will be um, up to 90 degrees, east will go out to 180 degrees, south will go to negative 90 degrees, west will go to negative 180 degrees. And so this is what that looks like, your basic geographic coordinate system. Um, the equator, where the equator and the prime meridian match is going to be right here off the western, um, off the western shore of Africa in the Atlantic Ocean. That is your um, basically center of the geographic uh, coordinate system or your origin. So we go out to 180 degrees this way, 180 degrees that way, 90 degrees up, 90 degrees down, and that gets us our, um, our 360 degree view of the Earth. So the prime meridian, why is, why is the prime meridian in the equator? The equator makes sense, that's the um, part where the sphere is the widest in terms of diameter. That makes sense, but why the prime meridian? And well, the answer to that is that's where this idea came from. It was the idea for this whole system came um, from Greenwich, England, and so they've kind of run with it and decided this uh, this is the spot where um, they should have zero, zero degrees in terms of a um, horizontal meridian. And so it's called the Prime Meridian, and the town takes it very seriously as there is a line, as you can see, that goes right through town, including right through buildings. And you can see that on this phone, it is where you get zero degrees um, east-west. And so they, it, it's in Greenwich, England, and that that is one uh, axis that matches up with the equator, and that gives us our origin for the geographic coordinate system. So the equator, whoops, let me go back a slide. The equator, we just kind of mentioned that quickly. So it's this line right here, and it is the um, widest part of uh, the Earth as a sphere. Um, it's the widest part in diameter. 
And the reason for that is because we've got the two poles and we've got gravity pushing on them at all times. So think about if you had like a basketball or a soccer ball in your hands and you were pushing like this constantly, just really pushing as hard as you can like this. The widest part of that ball is going to be right in the middle because as you push like this, the middle is going to expand as much as possible. And that's why the equator is that other uh, axis that we're going to use. So then that gives us our latitude and our longitude or the basic math to this. Well, now we got to figure out how to, to represent that. And so uh, the idea is that latitude are going to be lines that run parallel uh, to the equator. So here's the equator, and our latitude lines are going to increase as we go all the way up to 90 degrees. So there's 0 degrees latitude. This would be 20 degrees latitude, 40 degrees latitude, 55 degrees latitude, all the way up to 90 degrees latitude. And what we're saying is it's the angle north or south of the equatorial plane. So here's the equator, right? So if I look at 55 degrees north latitude, what I'm saying is if I went to the center of the Earth and I looked at the equator and I looked at 55 degrees latitude, that would be that's the angle if I took if I went all the way to the center of the earth the from the equator up to 55 degrees that's the angle that it is and that's why it's that way because a right angle basically the equator and the north pole that's 90 degrees because a right angle in our basic math is a 90 degree angle and so this would be 55 40 20 and that's how we've set it up. And it's the same if we went and looked at the south latitudes. In terms of our longitudes or meridians, those are perpendicular to the equator. And they converge at the poles because um, it's a spherical object. So the lines need to be um, parallel to each other, but they're going to um, come to the poles. Um, and when we're talking about these ones, we're still talking about an angle again using the center of the Earth but it's going to be off of the prime meridian. So here's the prime meridian. And so if I say 45 degrees west or negative 45, I'm saying that that is a 45 degree angle west of the prime meridian. And so that's how the idea of latitudes and longitudes work. It's the angle if we have taken these two, these two axes, axes that make up our origin and we're just taking the um, the angle off of those lines. So then we have um, two types of coordinate systems. With the geographic one, which we've just talked about, is more used on round surfaces uh, like the Earth. When the Earth is um, looked at as a sphere, when you're looking at uh, the globe. Um, this is very good in terms of um, using it for direction. So this is going to be the basis for our uh, compass measurements because uh, it works really well when it's rounded and everything's done uh, in terms of angles. For rectangular coordinate systems or flat coordinate systems, um, on a map, the lines are going to be flat and straight. And this is um, the measurements then are going to be made in terms of distance instead of angle. And so this is really good for measuring distances. When you use something like Google Maps, Google Maps is going to look a lot more like this than it will like this because Google Maps doesn't tell you angles to take to get to places. It tells you a specific distance. Go this way for this long, turn right, go this way for this long. It works much better in terms of a distance measurement. When we're using our compass and we're trying to go uh, in direction, then we want to use angles because it works better for us. So I've used the word projection. So just in case you're not uh, familiar with the word projection, that is a transfer of real-world features from a round Earth surface to a flat map, map surface. Or in the simplest of terms, like this, little picture shows how do we take a 3D object and make it 2D 
or three dimensional to two dimensional. Take it from um, geodetic to plane or flat. So this is going to be important when we look at our UTM and state plane coordinates on maps because those are going to be flat map projections, whereas our latitude and longitude on our maps is going to be um, the geographical spherical um, uh, coordinates. But it's all all the coordinates are there on a map. So um, this is this is where it gets interesting when we talk about uh, Mercator differences. Uh, so you're, there's a lot of projections in terms of how the world um, works or how the world is viewed. And your projection can uh, change uh, even the way you think about um, the world and how the way the world looks at certain things. Really the way to think about it is um, that your, your view of the world is exists because of the way you see it on maps and because of the way uh, it's displayed. In this projection here, we see um, Africa being um, kind of big, but not really big. We see the South Pole as being gigantic. Whereas in this projection here, look at the South Pole now compared to the size of Africa, but look at South America now in comparison to Africa. And so um, I've included this link down here at the bottom, which I think you should really play with because I think it's it's really fun. It's called the true size of, and what it lets you do is it lets you take uh, countries and bring them to the same part of the projection so you can actually lay them on top of each other and see just how big some of these countries are because there's some countries that you may think, oh, I, I know the size of that roughly but then when you actually bring it to the same um, the same part and lay them over the top of each other one might be way bigger or way smaller than you actually think it is and so that's why it's also important then when we come to this slide to take um, take a uh, a look at this uh, YouTube video that I've attached here it's from a TV show a TV show called The West Wing, and I know that it's, um, I know it's a, a fictional um, drama, but the idea of what they're talking about is not fictional. The, they're talking about this idea and how this, um, actually the way that maps are created and the way that um, maps can be used actually can create um, inequity. And so it's really important to understand just how important maps are and the power um, that maps can have. So um, also when you're looking at maps, why would maps use uh, different map projections? Why isn't there just like one projection or like a couple projections? Why are there hundreds of projections? Well, and it comes down to one uh, simple idea. It's impossible to accurately represent Earth on a flat surface. No matter how you flatten a round object onto a flat piece of paper, there's always going to be distortion, especially at the edges, because um, if you think about it this way, um, think about like a basketball, a soccer ball, a football, any of those rounder objects. Now think about it if you cut it open and you tried to lay it flat on a surface. Do you, what way would you cut it and what way would you do that to best represent that round shape that you're used to? Because it just seems really hard and that's the idea you're trying to represent the earth and think about how complicated the earth is and you're trying to best represent the round um, the round earth as a flat piece of paper and so no matter what happens it's not going to come out um, perfectly so there's four real things that surveyors or uh, cartographers map makers um, really think about when they're doing this. They're thinking about uh, conformality, distance, area equivalence, and direction. So conformality. So are the sh shapes of places accurate? So when I think about what Bakersfield, California looks like, when I represent it on a map, is that correct? Is Northwest Bakersfield in the Northwest and Northeast Bakersfield in the Northeast? Or is it distorted in some way? They think about distance. So when you're looking at the map, if I say that, um, if I know that uh, Fresno and Bakersfield are 100 miles apart, when I make my map, 
does my map show that Bakersfield and Fresno are 100 miles apart? If it doesn't, then, then I know I have some sort of issue with uh, the projection. Area equivalents. Are the areas on the map proportional to their area on the Earth? For example, if I have a map where I've got Bakersfield and I've got uh, Tehachapi on the map, if, Teha if the town of Tehachapi looks like it's the same size as the town of Bakersfield, I know I'd have a problem because I know Tehachapi is a smaller town than Bakersfield is. And the last one is direction. So are the angles of direction portrayed accurately? Meaning, I know um, I know that uh, Arizona is east of California. But if I put together a map and all of a sudden Arizona is um, south of California for some reason, then I know I'd have a huge problem. So you got to look at kind of those four things and you find a projection that gives you um, the best out of those four because uh, some maps, the distance might have to be perfect. It might not matter if the shapes are are exact or if the um, proportionality is exact as long as the distance is exact or you really might need the proportions to be perfect but you might be able to um, sacrifice a little on the shape. All your projections are going to offer you something different. You kind of just have to figure out which projection will work for what you're trying to do. Here's some examples. Here's the Mercator projection and this is why I used that um, West Wing video because it wasn't um, joking. There is a Gauls Peter projection and you can see how dramatically different uh, Africa is in terms of size in between these two projections. Also of interest, look how big South America is in terms of size compared to, say, the United States and, say, Europe. In this map, Europe features prominently in the center. In this map, Europe is much more towards the top of the map, whereas Africa features high in the center. So you can see how inequity um, can be um, put together in some of these views. Here's some other projections. Miller syndrical, goods, homolocene equal area, sinusoidal equal area. There's all sorts of different ways we can um, project the earth and it really depends on what we're trying to accomplish with that projection. So let's take our uh, rectangular coordinate systems or flat coordinate systems, what we're going to see on maps and let's, let's take a look at those. So they're, they're just basic grid systems using uh, XY coordinates and um, to make it simpler the, the rectangular coordinate systems that we're going to um, focus on and use are uh, UTM or Universal Transverse Mercator and State Plane. Now both of those are going to use what are called Eastings and Northings and they're only going to be positive. So basically we've taken that Cartesian coordinate system and we're only going to use the top right of it because we want only positive values. So our Northings are going to be on our Y axis, our Eastings are going to be on our x-axis and then we might add in some z values which will represent uh, elevation. So just going back to our basic Cartesian coordinate system from geometry what our um, rectangular coordinate systems are doing is just basically taking this part of the coordinate system and just focusing there and we're going to have our northings and we're going to have our eastings for our measurements. So this is the Universal Transverse Mercator System, which should look very similar to our Geographic Information System. So for the UTM system, we have 60 zones. Each uh, zone is 6 degrees of longitude. And so you see we have our basic geographic coordinate system. So positive 180, negative 180, positive 90, negative 90. But then what they're going to do is they're setting up each of these zones. And you can see this one right here is 31x, 33x, 35x, 37x. Because those ones are going to be slightly different. Because remember when we said when we flatten out the earth at the edges, it's going to be a little bit off. But you can see here towards the center, all of our little zones, which each represent 6 degrees of longitude, they're all set up perfect and nice. Then it gets a little funky towards the edges but down here in the middle 
it's nice. And this is the area that that UTM tends to focus much more on. The other rectangular one that we have is State Plane Coordinate System, which was established in 1985. Um, it focuses on the United States. That's why it's called the State Plane. Um, it's the width of the zones are limited to 150 miles. Uh, it was 124 zones in 1983, and each zone is its own uh, plane coordinate system. It actually has better accuracy uh, than the UTM zones because they're smaller, so they're less susceptible to that um, um, projection-related distortion that we've talked about before when you get larger areas over 300 miles. These ones are only 150, so they avoid uh, projection-related distortion. And so the state plane coordinate system looks like this. Now you'll see, remember with UTM, everything was a perfect same square. But um, this one, we took the states and we found better ways to divide them up in order to uh, become um, more accurate or have a more accurate um, measurement. So coordinates. Spherical map projections, um, which on a map we'll see in terms of latitude and longitude, use uh, for its coordinates degrees, minutes, seconds. And those are measurements made in angles. So we start with the angle, which is measured in degrees. Let's take 60 degrees okay within each degree is um is 60 minutes and within each minute is 60 seconds so if i was using 60 degrees it would be 60 degrees each degree would have 60 minutes in it and each minute would have 60 seconds and that's to um, be able to get more accurate so i could say that rather than just saying I had a 60 degree angle, my angle uh, to get really precise, uh, to get a really precise measurement would be 60 degrees, 47 minutes, 37 seconds. Then that would get me um, specifically to a place rather than just kind of close to it. Uh, whereas if I'm using a plane map projection, projection or a rectangular flat map projection, they use that X and Y axis. They might be measured in degrees, minutes, seconds. It might be measured in feet. It might be measured in meters. More than likely, it's uh, more than likely distance measurements are going to be the ones that are used because, um, like we said before, the flat maps they really they're partial to distance and they're they're going to do distance really well. So you're going to see um, the UTM map um, uh, units in meters. And you're going to see the state plane uh, units and feet because that's they're really focused on making sure they get distance correct. So if we're going to write down coordinates, um, there's a couple ways it can be written. So you can do it uh, either using the uh, direction or you can use positive or minus. But you don't use both. You use one or either. So I can say something like um, 90 degrees. And that would mean 90 degrees north, because if I was going to say um, 90 degrees south, I would either say 90 degrees south or I'd say negative 90 degrees. And so uh, for Johannesburg, South Africa, you could, if we want to get really accurate, um, you're going to say 26 uh, degrees, 12 minutes, 16 seconds south, 28 degrees two minutes 44 seconds east that would be johannesburg south africa or we could also say negative 26 degrees 12 minutes 16 seconds 28 degrees two minutes 44 seconds because remember east is positive but south would be negative so why why teach you all of this stuff because when we get to topographic maps and we start studying topographic maps, um, the, the USGS, United States Geological Survey, topographic maps have UTM, state plane coordinate system, and latitude and longitude or geographic coordinates listed. Um, so, sometimes they don't have all of them, but uh, almost all the ones that I've seen have all three of those listed. So... Uh, your geographic coordinates are going to be in latitude, latitude and longitude and going to be in degrees, minutes, seconds. Your state plane coordinate system is going to be in feet. 
And so that'll be feet north of the equator for your northings and feet east of the origin of the map's given zone um, for your for your easting. For UTMs, northings and eastings in meters, nor meters north of the equator, and then meters east of the origin of the map's UTM zone grid. For the degrees, minutes, seconds, it'll be degrees, minutes, seconds north of the equator and degrees, minutes, seconds east or west of the prime meridian. So what does that actually look like on a map? So let's take a look at our map here. So we can see on our example here, we've got northings and eastings. So in the corner of our map is where we're going to see our geographic coordinate system, our latitude and longitude. So we can see we've got degrees, minutes, seconds right here. And now um, for um, UTM coordinates, if we look right here, we've got a northing, and we know these are UTMs because that M right there means meters, and we got an easting over here, which is also in meters. Um, if we could look out farther, we'd probably find some state plane coordinates, and we know that those would be the state plane ones because they would be in feet. So let's take a look right here. So this one says we have a thousand meter universal transverse mercator grid ticks zone 18 shown in blue. So what does that mean? So when it says uh, grid ticks shown in blue, so we see this right here on the map, that's a grid tick. And then it said thousand meters. So if we see 258, what we need to do is add on three zeros at the end there. So it's 258,000 meters and this one right here four five one five add three zeros that's four million five hundred fifteen thousand meters so this would be four thousand four million five hundred fifteen thousand meters north of the equator this would be two hundred fifty eight thousand meters uh east of whatever origin uh whatever the origin is for zone 18 because that's our specific our specified origin Notice on this map now that we have, um, I'll just bring in that, um, that math for you. There you go. So unlike longitude, UTM eastings do not converge on the poles. They are straight lines, and that's why it works out great for distance. Now looking at the same map again, we have a 10,000 um, foot grid based on the Pennsylvania coordinate system north zone. So these are going to be our state plane coordinate systems, and our state in this case is Pennsylvania. So you can see right here, we've got this measurement. It represents a north-south grid line that is 1,970,000 feet east of the origin of the Pennsylvania north zone, because that's what we got right here, Pennsylvania coordinate system north zone. And up here, we would have a northing um, that is north of the equator that would match up at, um, with this other state plane uh, coordinate. And unlike longitude, state plane coordinate system eastings don't converge on the poles. They're also straight lines, so also great for distance. There, here's our latitude. Right, east west line um, indicating degrees north or south of the equator, and then our longitude north south line indicating degrees east or west of the prime meridian. Now, the last couple things to talk about with a map are a datum. So, a datum is a mathematical relationship between a grid and a model of the Earth's surface. So, the Earth isn't a perfect sphere, it's actually a geoid which approximates global mean sea level across which gravity is equal. So this thing that, that we're looking at here, this is a geoid. So the Earth isn't perfectly shaped. So if we were to put this kind of reference ellipsoid on top and compare it with the geoid, now we're getting more towards what the Earth actually looks like with the, um, with the influence of gravity and... Um, and trying to really calculate uh, just the exact shape of the Earth. And so we have to account for this in our maps as well. So going with our same example there, we're going to use the 1927 
North American datum in this map, although there is a um, more accurate uh, NAD 83 or North American datum 1983 um, that is used. This example uses the 1927. A lot of the maps you'll see nowadays um, refer to the uh, to NAD 83 or the North American datum of 1983. So um, why is the datum important? Because it'll um, create new distortion on the map and it can it can shift the way um, things look but that shift is um, really important because it actually it makes the locations more accurate because we could only measure uh, to a certain accuracy in 1927 but now in 1983 we could get even more accurate and we'll probably be coming out with a new datum soon as well because technology has just increased and we can get even more precise and accurate with our measurements so there are other datums. Um, another one that you'll get familiar with is uh, World Geodetic Survey or WGS 1984 that was specifically um, developed for GPS but is very close to NAD 83. Um, some, there are some online tools that can translate two coordinates and sometimes the USGS maps like this one here will show how to adjust from NAD 27 to NAD 83. So the last thing we'll talk about are Z coordinates or uh, elevation. Elevation is just your vertical position above a reference and the reference that's always used uh, is mean sea level. When we're talking about maps we always talk about uh, mean sea level. And so uh, just kind of ignore the fact that on this example Niagara is misspelled and let's just focus on the numbers. So. When we look here at Lake Ontario, the elevation is 246 feet. When we look at the elevation uh, here for Lake Erie, the elevation is 571 feet. So we have an elevation difference of 325 feet, and that is the drop of Niagara Falls, or the Niagara River, going from Lake Erie to Lake Ontario, and then becoming the St. Lawrence River. And so, elevation we're just we're taking something like sea level and we're saying okay so Lake Ontario is 246 feet above sea level and Lake Erie is 571 feet above sea level that means that Niagara Falls our change our drop off between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario is going to be a difference of 325 feet in elevation so um, just one kind of thought on elevation just remember because we're talking about sea level and using sea level as a reference that also um, changes things most people think mount Everest is the tallest mountain on the earth and um, if you're talking about above sea level you'd be correct but if you're talking about just the tallest mountain it would actually be hawaii's mauna kea because hawaii's mauna kea is actually 33,465 feet as opposed to the 29,000 um, 28 feet of Mount Everest, um, but the majority of that mountain is below sea level, and so it doesn't it doesn't count as the um, Earth's tallest mountain. So what you use as a reference point uh, is important. So in summary, uh, when talking about maps, really understand the idea of a projection: how we transform a sphere to a flat surface understand a coordinate system, how we placed a grid onto our projection, and then understand a datum. So datum really has to do with that distortion of um, trying to, to mathematically model the Earth and figure out how to best put these numbers on, on these projections to make it to be as accurate and precise as we can get it so that we can use it well.